You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Karen. Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. His mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people. Come on. And God wants everyone to know it. Yeah. So what they carried was Christ and the Holy Spirit. What we have is, we've got nothing that can, what we have in the natural is what anybody else has in the natural. Nothing, you know, we might have a bit of money, we might have this or that. There's nothing in us in the natural that can heal anybody. There's nothing in us in the natural that will release the blessing of God on our employer's affairs. But what we do have, as we release it for other people, it releases the love of the Father because it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. It's the goodness of God. It's not the condemnation because that comes from the enemy. It's not the, oh, you lousy person, get your life right or you're going to go to hell, you stinking sinner. It's not that. It is simply the love of God because he sends the rain on the just and the unjust, the sun on, on everybody. He loves people and his desire for everyone is that they would find eternal life abundant life through Jesus Christ and we have to recognize that the love of the father is to release his goodness his kindness upon people on, on the on the in the land of the living you know his father's up there wanting for people to taste his goodness wanting them to know how wonderful he is wanting them to receive of his mercies wanting them and we carry all of this on the inside of us and it's when we actually connect from that time that Joseph and Potiphar connected from the minute that the beggar spoke to Peter and John and said give me and they, they looked and said look at us you know if you want something you'd better be looking but from that time, the time they connected. So it's recognizing that there is a divine timing in the things of God. If Potiphar had not bought Joseph, he'd been five minutes late and Joseph had been bought by someone else. So in this, God's got a hand. In this, God is at work. But we have to actually align with the timing of God. And where we often miss it is that we get so caught up in the busyness of life that we're not even aware that we're not in God's timing. We're not even aware sometimes that we've missed an alignment that would be important for us or for them because I've got, I've got to get there. I've got, I've got an appointment at this time. I've got to do this. Well, there's a, there's a, a peace that comes when you step into the pace of grace, mm -hmm. the rhythm of heaven, the timing of God that changes so much. It affects the situations around you. It affects people. It releases God's blessing and kindness and joy. It does so many things, but it's recognizing that there is a timing. Mm. And sometimes we're so far ahead of God. Yeah. Anyone ever done that? Yeah. I have. So far ahead of God, he's trying to reel me back in. Other times I'm sitting back thinking, oh, God, is this you? I'm really not sure if it's you. Like, I'd really, like, can you just confirm? Meanwhile... He's moved on to someone else who's going to be obedient instead of sitting there going, is it you, is it me? Is it me? I don't know. Oh, God, if you could just confirm it again. You know, so we, we do all of these things where we actually talk ourselves. Our soul yeah. takes precedence over our spirit and talks us out of the timing of God and the alignments of God and the convergences that he wants us to flow in. And it's not about works. It's simply about flowing with him. Yeah. Just flowing with him, recognizing there is a timing. There is a timing. Now, my grandson, Roman, I said, which one am I talking about? Roman got home yesterday. And um, his plane was due in at 5 a.m. in the morning. So Danny and I were up there, and then it was delayed. So they came in later. So in all of this, there was a divine timing for the operation because if they had left it an hour... Uh, oh, sorry, if they had left it a year or later before they went and had the operation, he would have had to have the same operation again because his bones would have been too... whatever it is, I don't know what it... Uh, developed, yeah. So because his bones were at a certain... but because he's four, he should be fine. But if he was five or six, the children that have had those operations in that age have had to have it again later. 
um, at eight or nine or ten or something. So there's a timing, you see. There's a timing. There's a timing to ask your boss for a raise. Anyone ever recognise now is not the time? <laughs> you know, <laughs> not talking to the boss today. Or you, you, one of your kids has done something you need to talk to them about. And you think, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to give them a bit of time to cool down. And then, we, then we'll talk. There's a timing to everything. But the most important timing is the timing of the Lord. He orders our steps, but we often don't allow him that. He's given us free will. We don't always yield. And he's sovereign, but he does not abuse free will. There is a time. And let me tell you what the, the Holy Spirit will do. I just want to share this. And then we're going to pray. Because sometimes... When you're in the right timing, there is a frequency that is released. Yes. When you're in the right timing, there is a frequency that is released in the spirit realm that just causes everything to come together and to converge. But if you're out of that timing, the frequency is distorted. You're not going to have the fullness of what God has got for us. You know, sometimes we miss out. We get a taste of something. Oh, it's almost. Yeah. But you know there's more, but it didn't quite happen. Or it's a bit like Abraham and Sarah. What I prayed for, I got an Ishmael. And it's kind of like, oh, yeah, close enough, I suppose. But it's not the Isaac. It's not the real thing. Yeah. But in all of it, there is a timing. <laughs> so in Luke, the timing is so important. If Mary had not surrendered to the angel Gabriel and to the plan of God, let it be done to me, Lord, according to your will. So there is a, um, a post that I found that was posted by Chuck Pierce um, last week. I found it talking about this year and how important it is to be in the right place at the right time. And again, this is not works. This is about being led by the Holy Spirit. But, he's, but it's very much about being in the right place at the right time. This is an important season and an important hour. And we must understand that obedience is essential to bring about. And again, it's not works, but he was just saying, we really need to be listening to what the Father is saying and to be obedient to our Father. And I was so impacted by it that I actually sent it off to a few of my business clients, only a few, but I sent it off to them because I know where they're at. And one guy uh, sent me an email back this morning and he said, I've begun this. He said, well, we had a holiday in um, January and I'm sitting on the beach and the Lord said to me, take your foot off the pedal but keep your, keep your finger on the pulse. Come on. And so he said, I have resigned from all my responsibilities. Now, he still owns his companies, but he has resigned from certain positions in those companies that he owns. And he... Um, only has meetings between 9.30 and 1.30, and 1.30 to 5.30 is his time to sit with God and to hear his instructions, Every just to day. sit with God and to worship. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. So 9.30 to, to 1.30 is, is business time, but he can do this. I mean, he owns the companies. I wouldn't imagine his secretaries could get away with it or anything like that. But, he's, but he said, I'm doing this, and he said, 1.30 to 5.30, I'm sitting in the presence of God, and I am waiting for my instructions. And I'm worshipping. Doing business hours. Isn't doing business hours, yeah. Wow. So we can take some of these principles for ourselves because I'm telling you, yeah. this is a very important year. Yes. It's a very important year. And Jesus is our jubilee. Yes. But we have to align with the timing of God so that the people that need to converge with us, align with us for the blessings of God to be released, for cities to be saved, for lands to be taken, for all of that to happen, we have, it's the timing of God that's important. Yes. So in Luke, let me find it. It's really got nothing to do with, with timing, but it talks about the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. I was looking for the asterisk. 
Then the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And so the holy thing which will be born of you will be called the Son of God. Again, this is a timing thing. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and the power of the Most High overshadows you. That word overshadow you in the Greek, episkazo, means to cast a shade upon you. It means to envelop you in a haze of brilliance. It means to invest you with supernatural influence. So we can ask for the Holy Spirit to overshadow us, but at that time, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, at that time, this is what's going to happen. So I understand that you're going to have, we're going to have to learn to be sensitive to the anointings of the Holy Spirit. We're going to have to be sensitive to the move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Sometimes I can be talking to someone and it's quite an in-depth and the anointing is on us for that conversation and it's a time of ministry and other people can come up and just interrupt because they don't even recognize that there is, it's an anointed time. They don't recognize what the Holy Spirit's doing. So we've got to come to that place and it's not by anything we can do but saying, God, will you grow? me up will you will you mature me in the things of God so that I can recognize the ministry of the Holy Spirit so that I move in the timing of God so that I understand when my hour is and when my hour is not so if you want to turn back to John we're just going to very quickly go through some scriptures that Jesus used when he talked about time and hours and then we're going to pray for those of you who feel that your time has been misaligned we're going to pray that it comes back into divine alignment you might feel that you're ahead of God God. you might feel that you're behind God you might feel that you're so caught up in the times of in the world's time system um, that you know you, you, you just you just feel like you're just like out of alignment with the timing of the father in some way so we're going to pray for that because quite often people don't even realize it but we tend to go with the world's timing when in reality we are to go with the timing of God because we're brand new creations in Christ yeah. So in John chapter 2, verse 4, Jesus said um, to Mary when she asked for more wine, Dear woman, what is that to you and me? What have we in common? My time has not yet come. My time has not yet come. He understood when he, that he was not yet time to do it, even though he went ahead and did it. But he understood the timing. John 6, 66, isn't that an interesting verse? John 6, 66. Simon Peter, oh, I've got it. Um, sorry, it starts off in, in yeah, John 6, 66. After this, many of his disciples drew back and no longer accompanied him. There was a timing when what Jesus said was so radical and so different that they couldn't take it in. You know, eat my body, drink my blood, all of this stuff that he was coming out with. There was a number of his disciples that thought, you know what, we can't walk with you anymore. We can't follow you, Jesus. We can't, we can't. We don't understand what you're saying. It seems really weird. It seems like wrong. And so at that time, they withdrew. So there was a time when God actually pruned the ministry. There's times we need to understand the difference between the pruning of the Lord and an attack of the enemy. John chapter 7, verse 6. Whereupon Jesus said to them, My time has not come yet. But any time is suitable for you and your opportunity is ready any time. Verse 8. Go to the feast yourselves. I'm not going up to the festival because my time is not ripe. It's not the right time for me to go. Um, verse 30. Therefore they were eager to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him for his hour, his time had not yet come. John 8.20. Jesus said these things in the treasury while he was teaching in the temple, but no one ventured to arrest him because his hour had not yet come. So there's a whole lot of things. If, if you're in the timing of the Lord, what the enemy wants to do to you through people won't even be attempted because it's not the right time. It will stop works of the enemy. It will stop attacks. If you're in the timing of God, there is a protection for you in the realm of the spiritual. John chapter 12, verse 23. Jesus answered them, The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified and exalted. The time has come. Verse 27. Now my soul is troubled and distressed, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this very purpose that I've come to this hour. 
He understood what the time was all about. This was this purpose, this hour, for this hour, for this purpose I've come. Mm 